Joe Lop rice, also known as party rice, is a dish that everyone should know how to make. Jollof is rice that's cooked in a pepper and tomato-based sauce that ends up being spicy and smoky due to a very interesting spice mixture. And I would best describe this dish as subtly addictive. You know, not like sitting on the couch and devouring a whole bag of Doritos addictive, but more like I'm gonna head to the fridge for a snack and then you just end up eating spoonfuls of the cold leftover Jollof instead. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Now, as Zoe's Ghana Kitchen points out, this is West Africa's most famous dish, meaning everyone has their own way of making it, everyone says their version is the best. So what I did for my version is kind of a combination from a couple different recipes, but at its core, the underlying technique for jollof is very, very similar. Let's break it down. So the core components of jollof are obviously number one is the rice. Then number two, you have the blended tomato, bell pepper, hot pepper, and onions, which give this dish its signature color and aromatic base. Then lastly, you have the spices and scotch bonnet pepper, which provide that magical fragrance. And like I mentioned, there's gonna be a lot of variability within this, such as the type of rice used, the ratio of the tomatoes to the bell peppers, and the spices chosen. Since I have no background in jollof, I tried three or four recipes before landing on mine. And my version is kind of a mashup between the slightly simpler technique from a Nigerian jollof recipe by Ziwande and the spice profile from the Ghanaian jollof in Zoe's Ghana Kitchen. With that being said, let's get down to jollof. To start, let's make the jollof spice mixture. So get out a spoon, and this is gonna represent one part by volume. So I'm building the spice mixture by this original measurement. So to a bowl, add four parts of ground ginger, four parts dried thyme, three parts red chili flakes, two parts onion powder, two parts ground coriander, one part cinnamon, one part garlic powder, one part smoked paprika, one part salt, one part ground cubeb tail pepper, one part smoked crayfish powder, and finally a half part of ground nutmeg before mixing that all together. So two new spices to me in this mixture, but that are common in West African cuisine are these cubeb pepper berries and the smoked crayfish powder. And a lot of recipes you see won't actually use these ingredients, but after trying it for myself in both with and without, I highly recommend you give them a shot if you can find them. The crayfish powder gives it this nice smoked fish aroma and the ground cubeb pepper, I would kind of describe as a lemony citrus pepper without the bite that typical black peppercorns do. Now, both are very interesting additions, but you'll probably need to look online or at a specialty grocery store to find them. With the spice mix done though, let's make the sauce. So to a blender, add a half can or 14 ounces of whole peeled tomatoes, one fourth of a white onion, chop three red bell peppers into chunks and toss those in, then add one red habanero with the stem removed, and lastly, a little pinch of salt before blending everything together. Now one note, the scotch bonnet pepper would most traditionally be used, but the habanero is a pretty direct cousin. It's a little bit less hot and a little less fruity and smoky compared to the scotch bonnet, which my grocery store happened to run out of just when I was ready to film. With the blended sauce done though, set that aside and now place a pan over medium heat with about 30 grams of vegetable oil. Once the oil is hot, we're gonna add a half of a red onion that was thinly sliced along with a pinch of salt and cook this for about five minutes. I'm looking for them to be sauteed, but still have a little bit of bite to them. Once the onions are cooked down a bit and have started to brown, we're gonna toss in two bay leaves, 15 grams or two large spoonfuls of the jollof spice mix, about a half spoonful of that curry powder, and optionally a sprinkle of cayenne powder for some extra spice. Now let this toast for just 30 to 60 seconds until it becomes nice and fragrant in your kitchen. Then we're gonna come in with that sauce from the blender and bring everything to a simmer. So once this is up and bubbling, turn the heat to low and we're gonna let this simmer for about 15 minutes during which it's gonna reduce and slightly thicken up. Now, while that's going on, we can first preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Second, we can clean anything that needs to be cleaned. And thirdly, we can rinse the basmati rice that we'll be using later about three or four times until it runs clear. Once the jollof sauce has reduced down and thickened up, I'm gonna remove this pan from the heat and put a second pan on that will actually be used to cook the rice. So add another drizzle of oil to that pan and bring it to medium heat. Then once it's hot, toss in the washed rice and we're gonna toast this for about two minutes, just stirring it occasionally. Next, add our jollof sauce to the rice and we're gonna stir everything together to cook for about four or so minutes. And then finally, we're gonna add chicken stock until it covers the rice and lastly, add a nice sprinkle of salt. 
Now you could just cover this and let it cook on the stovetop, but I actually prefer doing this in the oven because we can make some crispy chicken thighs in the oven and clean the kitchen while that's all finishing up. So after the rice is in the oven, set a cast iron over medium high heat and immediately add some chicken thighs skin side down to the cold pan, along with a pinch of salt, which is gonna to begin to slowly render that chicken fat about five or so minutes. Once that chicken has started to brown and become crisp, just flip the thighs over, and we're gonna turn the heat down to low. Add a pat of butter, a bunch of fresh thyme, two cloves of garlic, and another sprinkle of the spice mix, and then we're just gonna base this fat mixture over the top of the chicken thighs for about one to two minutes. Now, instead of finishing this in the pan, I'm actually just gonna slide this whole thing into the oven, and if you time it right, these should be done at basically the same time. And like I was saying earlier, just use this time to clean any other dishes that you may have. After 30 minutes, we're gonna pull the rice out of the oven and let it all steam off. You wanna fluff the rice up a bit. Then lastly, I'm gonna add a pat of butter and actually some freshly sliced red onions. Just use that residual heat to kind of cook everything together and it's gonna be nice and fragrant and just absolutely delicious. Lastly, you're gonna to wanna to taste it and I like to add a little bit more salt and also a pinch of MSG just to help round everything out. And this is one of the greatest rices of all time. Like I was saying, our chicken thighs should be done too. So plop those on the plate with the rice. And then of course you can add a little bit of those juices over top of the chicken thighs. But now it is time to taste test, friends. So I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but hopefully you guys picked up on all the inactive time there is when making this recipe. Like there's all these moments where we can be doing other things, cleaning pots and pans with the kitchen. Uh, my kitchen's in pretty good shape right now. Just have the pan we cook the rice in and then the chicken thigh pan and those are pretty easy to do. So even though, yeah, it's not like a 20 or 30 minute recipe, it's like an hour, maybe hour 15, your kitchen's gonna be in pretty good shape so it is well, well worth it. With that being said, let's taste test. I've gotta say, this meal is definitely gonna be very high up in my kind of all time favorite meals. Like I said, something about it is just like, it's the perfect blend of spiciness. So you get a little bit of heat from the habanero, the scotch bonnet, um, but then all the spices that are in that spice mix and in the rice and building the flavors with the aromatics, the bay leaves, toasting the spices. And really what comes through kind of on the back end is that smoked uh, crayfish powder, which I really, really like, completely new spice to me before I started, you know, testing out various recipes. So hopefully you guys try this. Seriously, one of the best rice dishes out there. You've gotta try it. Um, my recipe for this exact version will be up on my website. Um, I'll also link down the other two kind of recipes that I were most influenced by mine, but there is honestly a ton out there. Um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. That's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.